Good morning. I'm off to a late start this morning. I apologize for that. Um, today is Veterans Day, and so before we get started in anything else, I, I definitely want to say a word about that. Um, it's something I think about consistently. I grew up in the Vietnam era, and I watched veterans come home, and we were in a very small town area, and for the most part, <clears throat> they were pretty well received. I'm sure not 100%. Uh, I'm sure I was unaware of some stuff that went on. But for the most part, they were well received. They were included into the uh, um, uh, the, the various organizations of veterans that existed at that time. And um, But we were very aware that there were other areas, other parts of the country, and... and um, uh, getting outside of, you know, rural western New York, where they were not received well. And so I, I've always had that um, that sense. My, my parents, um, uncles, uh, and uh, extended, you know, family, uh, we kind of came along late in, their, in life, I guess you'd have to say, and uh, and so my dad, my uh, my uncle Lance, and a number of other guys from our family had been in the Second World War. So there was a definite there was a definite sense of of um, pride in what they had done, and a sense of accomplishment. And uh, throughout my ministry, though, my primary. Um, ministry to veterans has been to Vietnam vets. And, uh, and I, I just want to say uh, a word uh, about that. Uh, <clears throat> we had a number of guys that were part of our, uh, our family relationships, you know, family by blood and family by choice, who went to Vietnam. And uh, there were five that we, five guys that we prayed for <clears throat> every night. Our, I and, and it became a part of my uh, evening prayer ritual as a little kid, you know. And, um, and all of them came home. All of them came home. Um, but most of them had been dramatically altered uh, by their experience there. And uh, I just, I just want to say that um, we really need to continue to keep people in prayer. Uh, the, the reality of it is that those who were veterans in, in those days from Vietnam had a, a much more difficult time in some respects coming home than those who had been in World War II. And <clears throat> the same thing I think is happening today with our veterans who are coming in from the Gulf. And so we, uh, we want to we wanna focus a lot of prayer on those guys who are and have fought on behalf of our nation. And you can say, I agree with this or I don't agree with this. Uh, you can go in any direction that you want to with it. But if you claim to be a Christian, then I'm going to tell you something. You need to be in prayer. You need to be in prayer for their lives, for their souls and that God would encourage them and bring them home, not just safely, but whole. Um, and that I, I say that very, uh, with a, a lot of intent, um, because what they have gone through and what they have seen are things that you and I can't even begin to comprehend, blessedly. And so as we celebrate this Veterans Day, uh, let it be for us a day of commitment for ourselves, for those of us who are not veterans, for those of us who uh, will not be experiencing some of the horrors, uh, some of the most horrific things that can be imagined uh, in the human condition, in the human situation. Things that, again, you and I can't even imagine that uh, some of these folks have gone through. And, uh, and so we, we definitely want to lift them up and uh, and speak words of blessing and ask God to protect them and to guard them and guide them and guide us so that we might be a supporting structure when they come home that will encourage them and will bless them and will lead them 
into um, what we perceive to be a normal life and uh, one which is very different than what they have been experiencing. So um, whether it's someone from the Second World War, um, and I just recently did a funeral for someone who had been at the tail end of the Second World War, um, or Korea, you know, or Vietnam, or Grenada, or the Middle East, either one of the surges there. Um, there is a constant ebb and flow of power around the world, and we have men and women involved in attempting to maintain not just our position as a nation, but attempting to uh, help those in other countries. And our motives are never perfect or pure, I know that. I'm not stupid, I'm really not. However, we are one of the very few nations in the world, if maybe, you know, I'm not quite sure how many there are other than that, other than us, who are trying to help build and, uh, and grow other countries. And we are not always successful, and we have some dramatic failures, and, uh, and we recognize that fact. However, again, as a Christian, and as an American Christian, we really need to be in prayer for peace, first and foremost. But then we need to focus on those men and women who are going through the horrors that they're going through on a daily basis and still are going through. So um, I would invite you to pray with me as, uh, as we engage in this Veterans Day, and then we will move on into our study of See, Judge, and Act. Will you pray with me? Lord, we lift up to you, first of all, those who are immediately in harm's way today, right now, at this very moment. People who are serving in our military and our overseas, and perhaps even here. But uh, Lord, you know <coughs> what it is that they're going through. You know the dangers that confront them. You know the hardships of the soul. You know the, the, uh, the problems of missing family. And, and you know the pain of families who are here without lo a loved one in place. As we come up on this season of Thanksgiving, Lord, it's especially uh, mindful for us. So we ask you to keep us mindful of that. Keep us in a position of prayer so that we might, at a moment's notice, at, at the instant of your Holy Spirit's touch, that we might begin to pray and lift up our voices together to your throne in heaven, that you would guard and guide these men and women in the duties to which they have been called. We ask for perfection in their motives. We ask for perfection in their actions. We ask for perfection in the leadership that leads them. Lord, we know as humans we can't do that, but, but Lord, we know that that is what you are working in all of us toward and for. And so we give ourselves to that, and we ask you to be working that in those that represent us around the world in our military. We pray, Lord, for those who are long past their active military service, but are still remembering, are still suffering the consequences of that service with so many cancers and, and other diseases. Uh, one friend in particular was is going through some other issues right now. Lord, we just lift these people up to you, and we ask you to comfort their souls. And, and Lord, we ask you to honor their service and, uh, and speak to them within their hearts, that they might know that their sacrifice has not been in vain. We ask for you to lift up this country. We, right now, are at all but an open warfare among ourselves. And, and Lord, that is not what you want for us. That is not your desire for this nation. We may go that way, and you may have known from the beginning of time that we would go that way, but it will be our decision. And we ask you to step in, Lord, intervene, and to bring our attention back to you toward righteousness. 
so that we can serve you and serve you correctly in all things that we do as a nation, let alone as individuals. Lord, we ask these things in your name and for the sake of your kingdom, which ultimately is where we belong. Before and above any responsibilities that we have as citizens of these United States, we are citizens of a heavenly kingdom. Keep us mindful of that. Help us to serve in that wherever we are and whatever we're doing. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday, um, we, uh, sorry, just thinking about somebody that's going through some stuff and, uh, it's a serious day and I just, I'm really serious about this folks. We need to be praying. Please do that. Please do that. Well, let's read this passage that we read yesterday, and I'll pick up on the second half of it and go, okay? <clears throat> now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, as we look at that passage, um, you know, we talked yesterday about the aspect of see, judge, and act in terms of um, Paul as he writes this, certainly John in Revelation, is see what's going on and understand what it is, okay? See what's going on, understand what's going on with God's help, and then choose to act. Uh, again, what you're talking about here primarily for us is often uh, preparation, Simply that, you know, it's preparation. And uh, so you look in, in the book of Revelation and you see all the hints and the promises and <clears throat> and it brings out a lot of questions, of course. But the thing that you want to grasp a hold of, hang on to with, uh, you know, with all your strength 
and recognize as the greatest truth of that is simply it tells us to be prepared. That's the judge part. See what's going on and judge, make a judgment as to how you know you're going to approach it. Be prepared for what is coming, and uh, you know both good and bad. Because as you as you see in this, um, there's there's warnings certainly that Paul lifts up, but there's also promises. You know, we're not just prepared for a terrible thing. We are prepared for the most wonderful of all things. And, uh, and again, we'll probably get into that a little more tomorrow. I just, uh, I want to uh, pick up on the tail end of, um, uh, well, probably verse 8. Let's start with verse 8 and go uh, down through 11. Uh, and, and we may go a little farther than that today, but I think that's going to suffice. Since we belong to the day, let us be sober, put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Does this sound familiar to you? Um, putting on the armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. And the shield of faith. And the belt of truth. Shoes that are the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All of those things, you know, put together become the uh, the armor. It's, rel it's related to a, a Roman soldier and the armor that a Roman soldier would normally wear. And he sort of references back and he switches the, the metaphor a little bit and says, you know, the breastplate of faith and love. And, uh, you know, what is it that protects our hearts? What is it that keeps us mindful? What is it that helps us to have uh, a good judgment? Well, in, in terms of how we might euphemistically refer to it, it's our heart. You know, where is your heart in this? You know, how is it with your heart? How is it with your soul? And so, um, you know, we are protected in even in how we see things by faith and love. So that needs to be a standard element. And, and if you see something and, and your judgment comes out of something other, you, when, you're, when you're making a, you know, an, a judgment, an assessment, um, and, and you're thinking about it, uh, if it's coming out of anger, okay, or coming out of frustration, or coming out of hatred, perhaps, then probably we're drifting into the shadows, if not the darkness itself, right? So, in other words, uh, let your vision be tempered by your faith in Christ and your love of God and God's love for you and for those who are still living in the darkness, you know, uh, we can get frustrated with people because they don't see things the way that we see things. And, and we may be very correct in that frustration. It may be very appropriate to be frustrated because of the rejection of God that we see going on. Howsoever, if our reaction to them, again, reaction as opposed to choosing an action, if our reaction to them is built on anger or frustration or some other negative uh, thing, then we have missed the mark. Because our responses, our judgment, our understanding is supposed to come out of faith and love. Now, keep in mind, there is a helmet, and the helmet protects your mind. So it's not just emotions, okay? It's not just your, your heart we're talking about. It's also your mind. And so... You understand what salvation is. That's you know, so the helmet of salvation. Guard your mind in its salvation. Uh, and salvation is imputed righteousness by God where it is not deserved. And yet, nonetheless, he gives it to us, puts it upon us, enables us to have righteous thoughts. Though we are not righteous in and of ourselves. And, and yet, the more that we grow in our relationship with God, the more righteousness is imputed to us and the more righteous we literally become because of God's presence in us. And, and so, you know, our righteousness recognizes sin. Our faith and our love uh, combined with that vision 
from our righteousness that God has given us, from God's righteousness in us, uh, then dictates what our action is going to be. So righteousness says, okay, I recognize that's wrong. And faith, our faith and our love from God and our love for God says, this is a beloved child of God. How then can I, perhaps even is God calling me to speak to this in this person's life? Now, later on, we, we see some, um, you know, uh, we see some ind indications that there is a definite concrete sense of that going on here because he says, um, uh, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. That's a loving response. That is a loving response in Christ, recognizing someone is weak, you know, and, and, uh, uh, it, it, in pure righteousness, it's like, well, you have no excuse to be weak. You know, uh, we could come out that way. That's become self-righteousness. But, um, you know, the reality is that when we see that, we recognize God's reaction to weakness on our part, which is what? He loves us and he encourages our souls. Therefore, we are to encourage the souls of those around us. When we see that they're weak, uh, People who are idling and not and not functioning, okay. And I think it's it 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 probably is a good way to put that is they're they're not functioning within the Christian life. Then we want to admonish them. Now admonishing does isn't doesn't mean going up grabbing somebody by the collar, slamming them up against the wall, and saying you better get to work, you you know lousy, lazy, whatever. You know that's not admonishing. Admonishing is you know. I believe there's things that God wants you to be doing and you're not doing them. What can what can we talk about here, just you and me, that is going to enable you to respond to the call of God in your life because God has a call in your life? That's admonishing. I mean, sometimes you have to say, hey, cut it out. You know better than that. Now, why are you doing that? And then and then gaining that conversation. Admonishing isn't just yelling at somebody. Admonishing is helping them to see the truth and to somehow interpret it into reality in their life, the truth of God. Okay? So, um, you know, we do have those responsibilities. We have that, you know, that salvation, that imputed righteousness that's going on in our head. And so we see things clearly through God's eyes, and then we feel things clearly through God's heart. And you got to put those two things together. And if it's all heart, it's a, it's a mishmashy mess. If it's all up here, you're a self-righteous jerk. And, and neither one by itself does anyone any good. But when you wear the helmet of salvation and God's righteousness is dwelling within your head and being guarded there, you know, and you have the love of God in your heart and you have faith, okay? Sometimes it takes faith to look at someone and say, God sees something in that person, but man, I do not. And then on the basis of God's instructions, God's push, actually doing something about it, right? So, um, you know, it's just, it's such powerful stuff. And and so we are to be active in one another's life. He goes on, he says, For God has destined us not for wrath. In other words, God, uh, in his decision-making, even at the very beginning, knowing that people would reject him, he made a plan for salvation. So his, his destination for you and I, if we will receive it, is not his wrath, not his judgment, uh, you know, culminating judgment, but uh, rather that his desire for you and I is that we would obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation, salvation to eternal life, salvation from wrath, salvation. I mean, salvation is a huge word. I've heard people say, well, what are we being saved from? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. You know what the Bible says you're being saved from? 
And, uh, and it is not a pleasant thing. You are being saved from the most horrific thing imaginable. You are being saved to the most glorious thing imaginable, to dwell in the presence of God for eternity, forever and ever. And, and we're reminded again, he goes on, he says, you know, uh, you've been destined for se obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. I think that's probably a reference to being, you know, uh, alive in this life or dead in this life. Uh, we know that the soul goes to be with the Lord uh, when we die. To be absent from the body is present with the Lord. I believe that wholeheartedly, and I'll hang on to that until I... I, uh, I get to heaven myself. Um, but uh, the goal is to be with Jesus. And we can do that in this life through the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. And we look ahead to a day <clears throat> if, in fact, we, uh, uh, the Lord tarries and we die, our souls go to be with him. There is no, uh, there's no break in that. There is no death for the soul. But as we are in Christ, our souls go to be with him, and we begin a whole other element of existence that will be culminated in the resurrection where we will once again have uh, our bodies uh, and everything therein will be perfect. We will have no disease. There will be no death. Jesus himself is going to wipe away every tear from your eye and death will be destroyed. The very last thing to be destroyed is death. So whether we are awake or asleep, that we may live with him. That's the goal, isn't it? You know, we, we look at an eternal element, but we also look in the immediate, because uh, though this body may die, the immediate result of that is that the soul goes, flees to be with him. And, and those are encouraging words. Those are encouraging words. Just lost a saint of the church. Had the funeral on Monday. Some of you may have watched it without even knowing. I know some people watched it without even knowing who Linda Vandermark was. But through the, you know, from the time that she was diagnosed with uh, cancer at a late stage and a very aggressive, aggressive cancer, she was uh, in, in a state of peace and calm. And I never saw anything that, that, indicated anything else other than that and uh and she was you know if you want to you want a definition of good to go yeah it was linda vandermark she was good to go and uh you know it uh, she set an example for a lot of people so you know Therefore, encourage each other. Let me encourage you today. Encourage those men and women that are coming back from battle and, uh, and from a war zone. May never have actually been involved in battle, and yet their lives are on the line every day because of the kind of warfare that's going on right now. Encourage one another in faith and in love and in righteousness and in our salvation. And build each other up. Build each other up. Paul says, as indeed you are doing. And, uh, and he's heard good things about the church at Thessalonica. Uh, are you working to build each other up? It, here in church, we've been, uh, and if you've been watching the Sunday services, we've been talking about, about you know, being blessed so that we can be a blessing and what it means to be a blessing and how it is that we, that we do those blessing things, you know, how... How do we distribute blessings? And, and uh, oftentimes it's as simple as praying for somebody. Sometimes it's just saying a kind word and a gracious word to someone. Sometimes it is, it is a blatant blessing. May God bless you and keep you. Um, you know, all of those things. You're about to get a blessing because I'm almost done. <laughs> and a benediction is always a blessing. An invoking of God's presence as we walk away from one another. But, um, you know, see, see the reality, see it through God's eyes, as he will give that to you if you will receive it. See it from God's eyes. Make a decision, judge, 
And again, do that with the, both the heart and the mind of God, and then act. And don't ever re, just react. And, uh, and the action is building one another up, encouraging one another, um, sharing our salvation, and focusing on Christ. If that, is the, if that constitutes the majority of our action, folks, we're going to be a, a world-changing force in each of our lives and in the people who know us and are around us. See, judge, and act. Well, today... Walk in the power and the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. That's your blessing. You've been blessed by God, not by me, but you've been blessed by God. That's my prayer for you, and it is yours to claim. So claim it and walk and take Jesus with you. Amen. All right, have a wonderful Veterans Day. Some of you are off from work, and some of you are uh, perhaps doing Veterans Day things. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to be ringing the bells at 11 o'clock this morning, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that and participating in that way. And uh, take a moment through the day to pray for those who are in our armed forces and, and uh, are going through difficult times. Once you're done praying for the individuals, pray for their families and uh, make a difference. Bye-bye.